Okay, we're ready to start the assembly. Uh, one of the things that we're going to look at with the toolbox library and the bearings uh, comes back to the mate references. So I'm just going to add a mate reference to this. Um, let's see, what's a good way to go about it? Because if I put it in the assembly with the, uh, the configuration, then there's a good possibility that when I switch these out, uh, one of those parts is going to be suppressed. And I don't really want to manage it that much. So let's go with the underside of the disc, since that's going to be our common component. I'm going to switch over to the assembly, mate reference, and it's going to be default in any for that edge. So typically those are going to pull coincident to the face and concentric to whatever bore. And I'm okay with turning off the origin there, so we'll go ahead and save that. It adds the mate reference folder. And in previous projects, we've managed these by going to their properties, and you have a suppression within and configuration. So we could manage it with one of the other bores that might make a little more sense uh, but visually if it works it works so um, let's go ahead and close this guy out we'll open up the uh, the new assembly and we're ready to start bringing in our parts so I want the holder base and it's going to be at the bottom center of the assembly uh, with the orientation from the part, we'll go ahead and hit OK. All right, so I could add mate references. If I was doing a lot of these, the mate references come in handy. Uh, so I could add mate references to everything, but I don't know that they're going to be uh, always going to be useful. So we're just going to rough position. And then this kind of starts that iterative process that I mentioned that I'm going to be doing my checks and my double checks as I go. And one of the things that I'm going to utilize are the hole locations. Because if the hole locations don't line up in here, there's good possibility when we go to put it together, they're not going to line up in, in the real world. So when we look at, the, look at that geometry, and then from the front, those all look pretty well centered. Any little mismatch uh, would be, if it's really small, it's not going to be as apparent. But typically we make uh, uh, big positional mistakes. We don't really make small ones. So let's go ahead and bring in the other side. And I let go of it before. Um, since we didn't get the, uh, the rotation uh, box, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and select. And then the mate alignment, when it comes up, we're going to be able to flip that around. And I don't really care that it kind of throws it at a weird angle. As I add those additional mates, it's going to bring it into position. So place those. All right, so the advantage of aligning those holes. If I shift one of those holes, I go in and do an edit and I move something or I change something and those become misaligned, they no longer play well with each other, I really want that error to pop up that says that mate is no longer, it's not able to solve for that mate. And then that helps me out on the uh, on the, uh, the debug and the what happens side. Alright, so let's go in and we need find our bill of materials so I can kind of keep the order. Bearings I'm not worried too much about. So this is going to be the advantage of the holder. We have the, looks like the, uh, the short, the um, button heads are to the outside. With that being close, and an eighth of an inch, yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting. So we'll have to see what that does on the uh, on the interferences. I know these can move, but just kind of uh, 
you know, trying to be a little proactive in the uh, in the group. So put those to the outside. I can assemble. That is eight, seven, eight, nine. So depending on which way I go, link one is over on the back side. So I'll go that way. That'll help a little bit. I insert component existing. And we're going to bring in the post, post holder assembly. So we have down here on the configuration I can pick for the short. And I already rotated it around. So as I hover over, it's going to show me that little symbol. And it unfortunately doesn't get any bigger, clearer. So once I place that, it's going to add the meat. And this just becomes a subassembly. We have the parts. We have another level. Um, we can have sub subs and sub 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 assemblies as much as you want to uh, to go. So, if I don't want this to rotate, then we're going to right click and do the lock rotation. All right, so link one is ready to come in. Uh, let's do the S key on this one, and we're going to insert component. So basically, doing the same thing, except this time. Before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead and turn the origins off. They're starting to, to bug me. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop our, uh, our bearings then. So from the toolbox, we activated the, uh, the toolbox, then the bearing, and this was a needle bearing. So since it's not specifically called out, we just know that it's not a ball bearing. So it must be one of the other. And then we did not find them in here. So the bolts and the other components. So I need to go back down. We're looking for the AFDMA 18.2.3.1, which if I hover over these, they should. Well, I guess make sure I'm back in the work area, 18.2.3.1. All right, so I can drag and drop. All right, so close. But it's going to use, and let's see, that is shown as a dash 12. All right, that one's going to be a little harder to read. So the 12 NIH... I-35. Okay, so that changed the uh, the thickness a little bit. Go ahead and accept that. All right, and I'm not worried about it sticking out. Um, not quite sure why it's uh, doing that on both of them, but okay. And what I'm going to look for, and it used those mate references, so it applied concentricity, and it uh, lock the rotation to that item and then we go find the coincident flip the mate alignment and if I want to see what it affected most of the time I'll click no that'll show me the list of items All right and then same thing we're gonna go identify the coincident flip mate alignment and this time I'll just click no all right so that face to that face. I don't really know where the position is going to be because it can it can move. And it's going to be the stack up. So kind of one of the things when uh, when we started this. Now the rotation. Okay, so the lock rotation on the needle bearing. One of those is probably going to need to unlock. Oh, I didn't want to suppress. I wanted to unlock. All right, so that should allow it. Yeah, it does it a little strange, but <laughs> it is allowing it to spin now. It's not locked in that horizontal position. All right, so at the very least, I may have to come back and put a, a distance... Um, I'm going to go coincident at least to start to get the uh, the stack up and uh, go.
go through that process. All right, so the next one, we can drag and drop a post holder in. And that post holder then is one of the long. At least I think it is. All right, so now oh, I did not hit the checkbox, so it's still short. So I'm going to go back to our reference. And that one is called as number 12. And you have the spacer long. Okay, so didn't, uh, huh. I'll have to double check the, the names. That might be a good uh, good example of the uh, for the renaming. Okay, so dragging and dropping that one, I did not pick up the um, the edge. So we'll just pick and go concentric, and then if I move it back and forth a little bit. Like the other one, I want to make sure that it doesn't move too strangely. My assumption would be that these are going to be somewhat in contact, but with the clearances, yeah, not, not quite sure. All right, so that moves a little better. And we're ready, ready to bring in the second link. Oops. So I want to place that, and we'll see if we uh, can get those a little bit closer. All right, so when I line that up, this time I'm going to wait, hit the tab button, and let it reverse. And then, okay, not sure where it went, but uh, this is the 35 again, so we'll need to make sure that gets selected. I could have also did done the drag and drop so maybe we'll do that on the last one is drag and drop uh, from the uh, the feature tree into into the work area so click hold down don't let go hit tab nope it already got it all right so in that case we're going to go ahead and flip the main alignment so since um, those are coming in, gonna have to uh, to see if there's a, a default setting for that, or because that's going to it's not locking the rotation in relation to the link; it's locking the rotation. So go concentric. All right, and then we'll bring that one and make those coincident. All right, so one more. We'll bring in the post holder, so that shouldn't really matter. We'll go this way, post holder. And it's not finding my mate reference. Usually the parts find the mate reference, so it might have to do with it being in the, uh, the assembly. Double check and go concentric, and then coincident. All right, and then the last link, um, let's go ahead and put in short. So that one jumped, huh? All right, so not sure if it was just the selection or the hover, but uh, that one gave me the symbol and it went to uh, that uh, added those two mates for me. So let's go insert component and launch automatically. Go to link three, hit OK. All right, so the drag and the drop, we have the needle bearing, so control, 
and drag, and then the contortionist fingers tab, and it flipped it around, or it actually it flipped the uh, the link around. So that was what was happening with it, which they are um, uh, they are symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm making sure. Okay, now I don't remember what I just did. I uh, <laughs> I always say you gotta let let go of the mouse button, but then, oh, interesting. So what did I miss? Let's go ahead and rebuild. Let everything catch up. Oh, I probably should have saved. <laughs> Hope we're not gonna get one of those crazy crashes.